Yeah, I think I got it right now because I was supposed to do this video months ago, but every time I think I have what I need, Trump turns around and does something else. Every 72 hours, it seems like this dude does something that's better than the main point I was going to make against him. Then I'd have to rethink what I was going to do, but I think I got it right now. And I think that, I think that the hatred Trump supporters have for other people won't be enough to turn them against Trump when it's time to vote. If they do turn against them, they'll only vote for a Trump duplicate. And all the clips I'll play, I'll try to keep them under three minutes long. In life, you have a thing called condemnation, and cities have the right to condemn for the good of a city. In the 1990s, Donald Trump was behind an outrageous case of eminent domain abuse. She loved that home, and Donald Trump wanted Vera's home so he could put in limousine parking for his casino across the street. Everybody coming into Atlantic City sees that property. And it's not fair to Atlantic City and the people. They're staring at this terrible house instead of staring at beautiful fountains and beautiful other things that would be good. You're bullying these people out because I'm not. they're... Excuse me, that's wrong. But for but... you to use the word bully, John, is very unfair. This is a government case. This is not Donald Trump. Yes, it's Donald Trump. It's you and your cronies in government working together. For you to call these people cronies is very unfair. To be calling good public servants cronies. An unaccountable state agency tried to condemn Vera Koking's property and transfer it to Donald Trump. He convinced the government officials to use their eminent domain power to take Vera's home. This was public power, but used for private gain. We have been so nice to this woman. I offered her a lot of money out of this, a little thing called heart. Heart? He doesn't have no heart, that man. The only thing he has is what he's worried about himself. Basic to freedom is that if you own something, it's yours, that the government doesn't just come and take it away from you. Do you want to live in a city where you can't build schools? Do you want to live in a city where you can't build roads or highways or, or have access to hospitals? Condemnation is a necessary evil. But you're not talking about a hospital. You're talking about a building a rich guy finds ugly. Represented by the Institute for Justice, Vera beat Donald Trump and saved her home. If there is justice, then they would have never done to me what they're doing. I want to see justice in here. His eminent domain mind is my primary concern with Trump, or what first caught my attention about him as far as who he is as a person. Because to try and use the government to run over little people for your own personal business, to me, defines him as a person. And he's tried that on more than one occasion. What do you think of eminent domain? Well, I think eminent domain is wonderful. I think it's a wonderful thing. I'll be honest with you. And remember, you're not taking property. You know, the way you ask the question, the way other people, you're paying a fortune for that property. Those people can but move if, two blocks away into if, a much nicer house. I know, but if they don't want to sell. Well, look, I mean, they look, don't want to sell. I feel well, we can move on. I, 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 I know what you mean. I agree. I think it's a great subject. It's a very interesting subject. I fully understand the conservative approach, but I don't think it was explained to most conservatives. Yes, he's a racist and a bunch of other stuff, but I'm talking about what summed him up to me was him attempting to use the government's eminent domain law to bully the citizenry. He's an imperialist, and now he sits in the highest office with that mindset. And his party picked him, so it's not just about Trump. This particular group of Republicans are Fourth Reich at this time, continuing Hitler's Third Reich. This bunch is not playing no games, so Trump can get the boot all day, but these folks got a plan with or without him. Trump's diehard supporters knows that he's eminent domain minded and they want a government to be able to just run over the people. So they elect a man that has no respect for the Constitution. He'd been challenging the Constitution since the 80s. What do you think of the, the trade war with China that the administration is taking? I think he's crazy. I think he's nuts. He's lost his cork. Would you say you're frustrated? Oh, absolutely. We're all frustrated. Yeah. For MSP? I guess that's what it is, yeah. You applied for these payments. Tell, tell me what led you to do that, what you think of it. Uh, yeah, I did, I did apply for the uh, market facilitation payment. Uh, the, the, uh, the payments themselves uh, are 
if you will, compensation for the losses that we've received or haven't received for the uh, normal, if you will, trade relation, you know, transactions that we would have had with China. You ap you applied for I did. payments. I did, yes. Yep. Why? Uh, I, I can't afford not to. Survival, you know, I got to pay bills. It's a difficult payment to take, I guess. Uh, you know, I understand uh, that, uh, you know, it's going to increase the federal budget. Uh, you know, I get that. It's difficult for a lot of us. I would say most of us would much rather, much rather have uh, positive trade news that resulted in markets that were able to, to keep us sustainable and, and continue to operate instead, um, of, taking instead of taking payments from the government. How much do you want to pay for your stuff? That's a question that I ask from time to time. How much do you want to pay for your stuff? Do you want to pay $3 for a loaf of bread or do you want to end up paying $11 for it? And I doubt anybody would disagree with me when I say that food is more important than anything else here after oxygen and water. And he's putting farmers on welfare and eventually out of business. But that's what the money he is giving to farmers is. He's moving them from independent to government dependence. Because he wants the price of everything we eat to be sky high. The president's hasty announcement of a trade war appears to have been spooking markets, and now this morning he is doubling down in a tweet. He wrote, when a country, USA, is losing m many billions of dollars on trade with virtually every country it does business with, trade wars are good and easy to win. Example, when we are down $100 billion with a certain country and they get cute, don't trade anymore, we win big. It's easy. It looks very much like the trade war fears are very real. This, what do they think is going to happen after what? this tariff that is unacceptable? Most economists tell you will tell you that after a couple, it may work in a very short run, but you take a look at the long game a year, two years out, and you're, what you've talked about is exactly what the problem is going to be. It's going to tank the economy. It's going to increase costs. It's going to hurt the very workers that he claims mm -hmm. that he wants to help. And that's the end game. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, look, there, there are deep divisions inside this White House and in the Republican Party. He has protectionist advisors like Navarro. He's got more free traders like Cohn. And the other question is, there's a Pennsylvania special election coming up. And did that, prospect of that, in some way lead him impulsively <laughs> to make this decision? Sounds crazy, but this is the Trump White House. Uh, okay, so It'll be 25% for steel. It'll be 10% for aluminum. And it'll be for a long period of time. President Trump sending shockwaves through Washington and around the world, announcing his administration will impose punishing tariffs on steel and aluminum imports, despite strong objections from his advisors and his own party. What's been allowed to go on for decades is disgraceful. It's disgraceful. Fears of a trade war ending with the stock market plummeting and uniting Republican lawmakers in opposition. And we've tried it a whole bunch of times over the last two centuries, and every time American families have suffered. It's bad policy. A spokesman for House Speaker Paul Ryan urging the president to consider the unintended consequences of this idea and look at other approaches. Senate Finance Chair Orrin Hatch warning that the tariffs are a tax hike the American people don't need and can't afford. And this Wall Street Journal editorial calls the move the biggest policy blunder of Trump's presidency, adding that he is taking a machete to America's trade credibility. President Trump's chief economic advisor, Gary Cohn, lobbied strongly against the move, and multiple outlets are reporting that Cohn is threatening to resign if the tariffs are imposed. Yeah, trade wars are good because it will be at the expense of the average person and not the super rich. And to justify his destructive trade wars, he complained that other countries were taking advantage of America. But Trump has champagne taste. Everything needs to be expensive and scarce, he figures. He models himself, or he sees these places that don't have great abundance as models. He wants an environment where people have to wait in line for a day to get food, like it used to be in Russia. He demonstrated that when he wanted people on welfare to begin receiving their food in boxes. He only wants abundance for the people he sees as being in his class. Nearly one million kids could lose their automatic eligibility for free school lunches under proposed changes to the food stamp program. According to the United States Department of Agriculture analysis, roughly 982,000 children are affected by these changes. About half 
would have to pay a reduced price for lunch. Around 40,000 would still need to pay full price. The rest of the kids, that's some 445,000, are still eligible for free meals, but their families would have to apply to qualify. The proposed rule from President Donald Trump's administration could strip more than 3 million people of their food stamp benefits. Katie Johnston for CBS Local News. One of the differences in the Republican and Democrat Party is Democrats will subsidize big business, as will Republicans. But the difference in the two parties is that Republicans don't believe that the people should be subsidized. He wants to drain the swamp, but not the people of his ilk. Well, a Washington congressman is rebuking the new rules that end food assistance for nearly 700,000 Americans, and he worries about an even broader impact here in Washington. Earlier this month, the Trump administration announced it's changing work requirements for Americans that qualify for food stamps under the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. You may know it as SNAP. During a roundtable to address the shortage, Democrat Derek Kilmer said he also expects 350,000 people in our state will also see their benefits reduced. One mother at the table says she's already seen her food stamp eligibility cut from $500 a month to $86. They work hard. They work for eight hours a week. And it's just, I feel like crying almost because I feel like there's nothing I can do. Uh, they say that change in rule is about promoting self-sufficiency, but um, nothing in the rule that they put out increases investment in access to job training or to jobs. Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue said the new rules will restore <coughs> the dignity of work and respect to taxpayer and respect taxpayers. Those rules take effect in April. Republicans believe in the people paying into the government. But Republicans don't believe that that should be returned to the people. Trump never hides the fact that he uses the country's outdated tax laws to his advantage whenever possible. But listen to this one. At two Trump-owned golf courses in New Jersey, the Republican frontrunner uses goat farms to dodge taxes, according to a Wall Street Journal analysis. By devoting some of the land on his golf resorts to goat farming, Trump is potentially paying less than $1,000 in taxes on land uh, that should carry a tax of about $80,000 a year. We're think about this. The biggest benefit of this ta beneficiaries of this tax code is the big corporations that are able to exploit and take advantage of it, and they're paying smaller effective tax rates than middle class and the lower class citizens. The man who one of his campaign slogans was drain the swamp, buys a few goats in order to get a tax break. This is the man who's been complaining about people in countries taking advantage of America. People on welfare taking advantage of the system, he believes. He sees people who don't have much as the swamp that needs to be drained. Situation where we're looking very strongly at sinks and showers and other elements of bathrooms where uh, you turn the faucet on in areas where there's tremendous amounts of water, where the water rushes out to sea because you could never handle it, and you don't get any water. You turn on the faucet, you don't get any water. They take a shower and water comes dripping out. It's dripping out, very quietly dripping out. People are flushing toilets 10 times, 15 times, as opposed to once. They end up using more water. So EPA is looking at that very strongly, at my suggestion. Uh, you go into a new building or a new house or a new home, and they have standards on where you don't get water. You can't, you can't wash your hands, practically. There's so little water comes out of the faucet. The part that caught my attention is when he said hardly any water comes out of the faucets because he wants to let these big companies do whatever, which is not good. The smaller government slogan, the less government in our lives mantra by the Republican Party really means to deregulate environmental protection so that corporations can make more money and speed up the tearing up of the land, sea and air. Because do you see them looking to reduce the amount of people in Congress, the House, or the Senate? That's a lot of bureaucracy in there. Smaller government. Government intrusion is what they claim to be against, but one of the biggest things they did was put their hands on women's bodies with this abortion ban. As of September, a new rule approved by President Trump means making the nation's pork supply potentially less safe. Usually when swine is slaughtered and sent down the mechanical line, there's a licensed and trained government employee in charge of choosing if the meat is good or if it's tainted. That job will possibly now be left to plant workers. 
I think the reality is farmers have bills to pay. And there's a new rule in town, approved last month by President Donald Trump, deregulating part of the process that makes the nation's pork supply safe, from piglet to your plate. But some food safety and labor advocates say the new standard could jeopardize the safety of the processing plant and millions of people. We know that pork already makes hundreds of thousands of people sick every year. Now Thomas Grameen with the Consumer Federation of America fears those numbers will spike. The USDA plans to slash federal inspections at pork slaughterhouses and rely on pork processors to police themselves, allowing pork production workers to speed up production lines. By increasing line speeds, they are going to sacrifice the health and safety of 90,000 pork slaughter workers across this country. Debbie Berkowitz, a worker safety expert with the Law Project, says the USDA is ignoring decades-old research that shows high-speed processing with saws and sharp knives creates danger for workers. You can't sacrifice worker safety just to increase profits. He did that recently to let corporations do whatever they want to do. And don't tell yourself that you don't eat pork, so oh well, that's on y'all. Don't tell yourself that because what you do eat is next. Deregulate protections is what they mean by smaller government. Deregulation also means constitutional protections that they want to intrude on. Republicans, you y'all, you guys used to say, we want the government out of our life. We want them out of our business. We want them out of our bedroom. Now you're in my womb. I want you out. You don't control this. You don't own this. I'd like to be able to just open up your minds and just see what's inside. I really would. Less government in our lives, but like the lady said, Republicans put hands on your body, banning abortion while removing welfare. The experiment had actually begun in 1966, when, out of the blue, Ceausescu issued the Decree 770, forbidding abortion. Overnight, maternity became a state affair. A woman had the legal right to have an abortion only if she was over 40 or if she was taking care of another four children. But unofficially, along with the banning of abortions, Ceausescu put a legal end to all means of contraception. So women in Romania had no escape. They were forced to become mothers. The silent war between them and Ceausescu began. Even after all we had seen, we were unprepared for what we found in an upstairs room. Here, young girls, their heads shaven, were kept in a giant cage like animals. Wild-eyed, screaming, half-naked, splashing in urine and excrement on the filthy floor. As the staff tried to quickly put clothing on them, we were ordered out. Why are you putting us out? Why? Twelve noon, we were allowed back inside the cage at the institution. It was meal time. The food budget here is set by the government, 38 cents per day per child. We watched as a watery soup of broth and bread heels was shoveled into hungry mouths. Many of the children had never been taught to feed themselves. That was in Romania. It was called Decree 770, outlawing abortion in the 1960s. And what that does is create a booming prison industry and orphanages. That's what banning abortion while cutting public assistance will do. Make a lot of money for Trump's and his Trump and his prison buddies who own these jails. He wants to create third world conditions here, which would be very profitable for people like him. Um, Mr. Carson, Mr. Secretary, sir, you have uh, indicated that there will be substantial cuts to the budget that HUD has. Can you give me that dollar amount? I'm showing that it's about six billion. Is that correct? That's about right. Is that about 13 percent of the budget? Yes. And will these cuts, Mr. Carson, come from public housing, housing vouchers, uh, community development block grants, and other aid to low-income persons? And they come from a variety of sources, including... How much from public housing, Mr. Carson? <clears throat> uh, probably in the neighborhood of, uh, if you combine all the programs, uh, two to three billion. Two to three billion. How much from housing vouchers, Mr. Carson? 
rather than go through a quiz on all the numbers. Uh, it's not a quiz, Mr. Carson. I have the time to ask you questions about things that you should have some knowledge of. If you have no knowledge of them, you can simply say so. I'll accept it as an answer. But this is something that's within your bailiwick, my dear sir. How much from housing vouchers? Well, here's my point. I agree with you that it's difficult to do these things. That, is not, that has little to do with my question. Uh, you're answering a question that I'm not asking, to be quite candid with you. So would you kindly tell me how much HUD is going to, how much you're going to cut from the HUD budget as it relates to housing vouchers? How okay, much are they going to cut? Let's just move on and say that I don't want to offer a number because it's subject Why to Why would the secretary of HUD not give the number, the amount that you're cutting from housing vouchers, Mr. Carson? Because you're we, the secretary of HUD. Because you're we, making the cut. Because we've already talked about the total amount of the cuts. Well, I, the total amount does not help me when it comes to the housing vouchers. I have people who use housing vouchers, and I need to be able to explain to them, Mr. Carson, uh, how much the cut portends for them. How much, Mr. Carson? Let's hear your number. <clears throat> well, Mr. Carson, forgive me for coughing while speaking, uh, but Mr. Carson, you're the witness testifying today. I, I, don't, I don't want to open the book and look at the numbers. Increasing the rent of people who don't have money while they also cut them off the money that they do have. These Republicans want food lines where people waiting in line for a day just to get the bare minimum to eat, like it used to be in Russia. His buddy Putin is his role model. I'm nothing. I'm going to end up in, an, in a nursing home. What we need is to be able to live independently in the community. Just because we're physically disabled or even have a developmental issue, we still can be productive people to society. We can also share what we have, our knowledge, and add to the economy. Why do you want to shut us away just because we have a slight disability. Disability doesn't mean that we can't contribute. No cuts to Medicaid! 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 The disabled, laying out in the hallway floor of the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's office, being kicked off their Medicaid. This is the fourth right group of Republicans. They're fascist. Greenland, I don't know, it got released somehow. It's just something we talked about. Denmark essentially owns it. We're very good allies with Denmark. We protect Denmark like we protect large portions of the world. So the concept came up, and I said, certainly, I'd be strategically, it's interesting. And we'd be interested, but we'll talk to them a little bit. There's that imminent domain mindset talking of purchasing a place like the people in it are cattle. He's stepping on the law and the people who support him can't see that next he'll be stepping on the laws that protect them. I promise not to do this to Greenland. But the joke it seems is now over. Trump abruptly cancelling his state visit to Denmark what seems a fit of pique over its leader's rejection of his Greenland idea. I thought that the Prime Minister's statement that it was absurd that was a, it was an absurd idea, it was nasty. I thought it was an inappropriate statement. All she had to do is say, no, we wouldn't be interested. Denmark's Prime Minister, Mette Frederiksen, seemed taken aback by the news, as well she might be. It is with uh, regret and uh, surprise that I received the news that uh, President Trump has cancelled his state visit to Denmark uh, on the 2nd and 3rd uh, September. I had been looking forward um, to the visit. Our preparations were well underway. On the streets of Copenhagen, Danes were less circumspect in their reaction to Donald Trump's decision. I heard it was because he couldn't buy Greenland. So if he's that stupid, um, I think it's good that he's not coming. Greenland is for the Greenland people and nobody else. Yet again, former US diplomats are horrified by the president's behavior.
cancels the trip when he can't get his way. Man who believes he can purchase a place full of people and make a business out of them finds it disrespectful that they see him as disrespectful. That eminent domain mindset. This fourth right group of Republicans are also attacking the 14th Amendment, questioning what makes a person a citizen. Maybe I'll get into that some other time. But the First Amendment, the right to assembly, is in the Constitution. Trump said that protesting shouldn't be allowed, and here's exactly what he said. He said, I think it's embarrassing for the country to allow protesters. You don't even know what side the protesters are on. He went on to say, in the old days, we used to throw them out. Today, I guess they'll just keep screaming. He models himself after these communist countries. <laughs> 